uh, here at the North Carolina History Museum. This is a World War One exhibit. You look up there, you can see the Lewis machine gun. It was the, the American military had no machine guns in the First World War when they got there. So they bought some from the, the British. That's the British one. They bought one from the French, which I wish was here. It was called the Show Show. The magazine was underneath the gun and it was uh, kind of transparent so you could see if it had ammo and all the dirt and debris got in there, pretty dirty battlefield in World War I. So it, most troops threw it away without firing one magazine. It would jam all the time as a piece of garbage. The Lewis is actually a pretty decent one. You can see the drum on top that rotates when you fire it. Um, it was pretty decent for the time down here, if you look down here. This is supposed to be a replica of those things they used for uh, looking over the trench, right? They had mirrors on the bottom and mirrors on the top, so you could look through the trench without getting shot by a sniper. When I was at sniper school, they had a modern version of that. It was a little telescopic thing, and it had a, you could, so you could look from a, you know, a hide position, and they showed it to us in the class, and all these SF guys were like, if I saw that thing, I would shoot it, you know? So they put it into an observation test later on, where they had a bunch of items that we had to pick out, and nobody saw it. Nobody, nobody actually figured out what it was. People saw it, but they didn't know what it was, and they just ignored it. So uh, yeah, pretty effective, but yeah, these, they had, they had weapons attached to these in some cases so you could shoot them from a hidden position, um, both sniper rifles and machine guns. This, when I looked at this first, I thought it was a hand grenade. It's actually a club for beating people with um, in the trenches. Trench warfare was brutal. The old Luger, uh, nine millimeter pistol, classic. And then that's a flare gun back there to shoot flares to light up the battlefield at night. No night vision back then. When I get down to Fort Benning, they have that mortar that shoots a nuclear bomb down there. It's called like the Fat Boy or something like that. Yeah, it was not a great idea, um, but they used it. These are mortars. These are like 60 millimeter mortars, I think. So 98K, Japanese, Japanese, Italian. Yeah, Japan. World War II, yeah. Japanese grenade launcher. And this is a French mortar, 50 millimeter mortar. The German P-38, that, that pistol right there, we were doing that, we were, we were shooting that on the Ithian Bravo course. And I put the mag in and let the slide go forward and the whole mag went, <laughs> fired the whole mag, full auto. The sear was broken on it. And like, if you, if you negli negligently discharge, you're kicked out of the course. So I was like, Something's wrong with this gun, it wasn't me, I swear. That's why you always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. But yeah, the sear was broken on it, it just kept firing, emptied the whole mag. Um, German FN model, you see that? that? That's interesting right there, number 10. A German FN model. FN is Fabrique Nationale, it's a Belgian company. Um, but the Nazis overran the factories and turned out, made their own guns while they were there. Um, yeah. The, the, the Japanese they had a lot of knockoff weapons from other people, but they always looked a little, a little weird. <laughs> 7.65, that little, it looks like a Walter PPK, but it's not. Cool. Um, no, no, that BAR, that thing weighs a ton. So you have the Springfield up top, then you have the M1 Garand. Um, uh, Browning automatic rifle, the BAR, 30 caliber. Uh, does it say the weight? Mm, no, I think it was a ton. Uh, the 1911, 45. Thompson machine gun, M1 carbine. There's the paratroop version with the folding stock. If you look at, like that one there, was the folding stock was made for paratroopers. But if you look, it was made by General Motors. 
So all the companies in the United States, a lot of them were uh, making guns for the war effort. I remember finding 50 cal machine guns in Afghanistan made by Singer. You know, Singer, the sewing machine company. So you could find them in Afghanistan made by Singer. That's how old they were, yeah. The boys right there had some big cojones, man. That took balls right there. What's this? Suppressed pistol. Tiny compass, this size is a button, number two. And compasses. Matchbox camera and supply kit, number three. Um, canister originally containing yellow smoke grenade. Document forgery kit, number six. Lock picks, nine. <laughs> Military intelligence field manual. They had the blood chits too, you know, that the, the thing that said in multiple language that, hey, I'm an American soldier, if you help me, you'll be raw. We still had those in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it, it was probably really quiet. Like the ones that are really short are not really that quiet. Pacific conflict was very underfunded for years. The whole, whole, most of the effort went to Europe, and it wasn't until uh, almost after the, the European war was almost over that they put emphasis on the, the Pacific. Still Japanese soldiers in Guam in the 1970s, hiding in the jungle, and uh, they had to go get this guy's commander to come in and tell him the war was over. He wouldn't believe it. <laughs> That's what she said. Mm -hmm. Space Force. Yeah, great. Mm. And we're back, Vinny. It's funny. Vinny. It's funny here, look. This, this, this is much more lethal a weapon at the time. That guy could fire it half a dozen arrows in the time it take to reload that thing once. Actually, a dozen arrows, probably. <laughs> like, tsss, like the fuse. Hang on, hang on. Stop moving. <laughs> It's a Colt 1962, <laughs> but there's so many different versions of guns. When they, when they started making these Colt revolvers, Colt was the first one to make us. He made a five shot repeating revolver, and the army looked at him, they didn't want him. And the Texas Rangers took him and put him to great use against the Comanche. And then they, they started gaining kind of momentum, but imagine turning down a, a five shot revolver for your musket, basically. Good old army. Um, and then the second version, the Walker Colt, uh, one of the Texas Rangers actually went to Colt and gave him all the improvements to do. And that was considered the best pistol of its time for a long time. That looks like the sword my brother found, something like that. 
I mean, there was, there was hundreds, maybe thousands of military patents of designs patented in the Civil War. Because at, at the outbreak, they were using single-shot muskets, basically, single-shot rifle. And by the end, they had rifle barrels with mini balls and, and uh, telescopic sights on them. So within that short uh, couple of years, massive improvements were done to the military. That's a cool handgun right there. And a Colt revolver. They still call it the wireless. Kit inspection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the one at Benning, the one at Fort Benning has, it has Herman Goring's baton in it, it has some cool stuff. That, that machine gun's Japanese, you know, they always looked a little weird. Um, yeah, they always just looked fucked up. I, I think they took other people's designs and just changed them, you know? So they weren't, they weren't like making their own guns from scratch, they were just taking other, other company stuff, other country stuff and adopting it. Like they have one that looks like the Luger, but it's just different. <laughs> 